Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're gonna be doing a thousand dollar streaming setup. Let's get right into it, shall we? But first, a word from today's sponsor. Are you ready to get your first gaming PC, but you don't quite have enough money saved up? Well, we got just an app for you to get a little bit more money. App Bounty is a app that you can download to earn some credits by doing specific things like downloading apps, playing games, and a lot of other stuff. You can cash in these credits for actual money in things like PayPal or Amazon gift cards that you could put towards maybe your next gaming PC or just a keyboard upgrade. So use the link in the description down below and type in code Toasty Bros to get access to all these really cool offers. So now, how about we get into this PC setup, shall we? All right, so as you can see, we changed clothes. And well, we have a lot of stuff on the table today. Jax is gonna talk about exactly what we have going on here. So as the title of this video implies, this is $1,000 and everything you could possibly need to start streaming, along with a couple free things that Matt actually told me about, such as a free Stream Deck app, which we'll show you at some point in the video. For majority of people, when you're starting out live streaming, you need a few essential things. Of course, you might need dual monitors to be able to have your chat up at all times to communicate with the people who are watching your stream. You also need a webcam to show your pretty face. And then also you need to get a microphone so they can actually hear you. And because of that, we decided to put together this full streaming setup. And and honestly, it's quite cost effective. It does have room for some upgrades. So how about we go ahead and talk about everything here on the table? So for the processor, we decided to go with a little bit of an older processor because Ryzen third gen is coming out and this makes it a little bit cheaper. This is a Ryzen 5 1600, which is a really capable processor and it's capable of overclocking, which we just so happen to have a really nice liquid cooler to go on top of that so that hopefully we can get this thing up to like four gigahertz. Big thanks to Deepcool for sending this over. This is the Castle 240EX. This is a 240 millimeter RGB liquid cooler that has that anti-leak technology inside. It's supposed to be really cool and it's a little bit of more of an expensive upgrade, but hopefully it'll help us get those overclocks we need. So Matt and I really trust this board here. It's a really good deal coming in at only like $90. It's an Astrock B450M Steel Legend motherboard, and it's a micro motherboard, but it looks really good, and it has some really cool RGB effects on it, which they show there. So we really wanted RGB RAM for this build, and we wanted to experiment a little bit. So this is V color, 16 gigs, two eight gig sticks, of DDR4 RGB RAM, and other than that, we don't know much about it. It comes in a really interesting case, which I've never seen RAM look like this before, but you know, we're excited to try it out. So big thanks to EVGA for sending over the 1660 Ti SC Ultra Edition. Now for storage, we went with the tried it and tested, tried it and tested, can't even speak. Now for storage, we went with the SSD that we use a lot in our budget builds now, a 500 gigabyte WD Blue M.2 SSD. M.2 storage is just as cheap as standard two and a half inch SSDs right now, so it's kind of a no brainer. You can get rid of that extra cable and it looks really nice. And these WD Blue drives are very reliable and very fast. Now we have to thank another company for helping us out with this project. FSP was nice enough to send over their Hyper M85 Plus 550 watt modular power supply. This thing is really awesome. 550 watts is more than enough to power a system like this with room for upgrades. And also it has the semi-modular capabilities to where you can actually cable manage a little bit better and make the case look really nice. And speaking of the case, we have another product from FSP. This is their CMT120. We're gonna be decking this thing out with some awesome RGB fans from up here, of course. These are favorite budget RGB fans. They look really nice and they're very affordable. We got a five pack of these RGB fans. They're going to look really nice. RGB always adds that final touch to a great gaming PC. As for headphones, we wanted some headphones that actually Jax and I use here at the office. This is a pair of Monoprice retro over the ear headphones. They don't really have a good model name for them, but they're around 30 bucks and they actually sound really good. These will be great for live streaming because they're very comfortable. And if you're streaming for long sessions, you need something that sounds good and also won't make your head hurt. Now, if you're going to be live streaming, your viewers need to be able able to hear you. So that's where this USB mic comes in. This is the Fifine USB microphone. If you're just starting out, you really want to put a lot of your money into the PC and then upgrade your other stuff as you go. And this microphone is a good starting point and you will be able to hear it when we do the actual live streaming test. Now we decided not to cheap out with the keyboard and mouse kit, hence why this is a thousand dollar budget. We actually went with a mechanical keyboard and mouse combo kit from E-Element. This is their Z88 combo kit. Uh, a mechanical keyboard is a great addition to any setup and if you're going to have a nice 
streaming setup they're gonna be using for hours on end, might as well get a nice keyboard to game on. Now, of course, if you're gonna get a webcam, you gotta go with the Logitech C920 or C922. This is the C922, but you can get the C920 and save some money. The only difference is 720p, 60 FPS, which really is not all that big of a deal, but you can save some money going the C920 route, but this is pretty much the king of all webcams right now, and you really don't wanna skip on the webcam department if you wanna have a high quality stream, and it's a great starting point. So as we mentioned at the beginning, you need dual monitors to live stream. Trust me, if you tried live streaming on a single monitor, you're probably gonna be upset. So what we have here are two monitors that we had in-house. What we do recommend though, is you go with this monitor brand called On, which we used in a previous setup video. We will leave links in the description down below. They are 50 bucks a piece, they're 1080p, 60 hertz, and you can get two matching monitors for 100 bucks. So we're just gonna be using these two 1080p monitors and matching them together. But your setup will actually look a lot better because you have two matching monitors and they'll both be 1080p. So for the sake of this video, because we don't wanna have to hoard any more monitors, we're gonna be using ones that we had on hand. So how about we start building this PC, putting the setup together and start live streaming on it. So a little bit of a pause in the time lapse real quick. We actually uh, made a little bit of a mistake, but with a little bit of modification, uh, we had to make the 240 millimeter fit in this case, the 240 millimeter liquid cooler. It actually doesn't really support a 240 millimeter liquid cooler. That kind of like went over our heads when we were uh, planning this project, but we managed to make it fit properly by just moving some stuff around and screwing things in a little bit of a different way. You'll see the end results. Honestly, it's not that bad, but if you are to go with this case, keep in mind, you would have to do some modification to fit a 240 millimeter radiator. But again, it's a $50 case. We're pushing the limits of a budget case. And well, just want to let you all know, uh, yeah. All right, guys, so after several hours of putting this setup together, having one monitor not work because we don't have a certain cable, having to take a monitor from a setup to use for this setup, um, well, we have some numbers to show you guys. Now, because this setup is designed for live streaming, I thought I should, well, live stream with it. And that's what exactly what I did. And if you wanna see the full VOD of the live stream, please check the link in the description down below. That will take you to Twitch as long as that VOD is still up, which I will make sure it stays up as long as it possibly can. But what I wanted to touch on was a couple of things that I did and a couple of key things about the setup that you all should definitely check out to decide whether or not this is the right thing for you. Now, let me talk about that microphone real quick. $30 USB, it sounds pretty damn good. How about you take a listen for yourself? This is what the microphone sounds like right next to me. The Fi-Fi mic is actually a pretty decent mic for the money. You can kind of get an example of what this thing sounds like. Um, also, we have the keyboard and setup and everything. So um, this is going to be a live stream. I'm actually live right now doing this test and we're gonna see if anyone shows up to the stream to watch me uh, test the system a little bit more. Uh, the webcam right now is Logitech C920. Keep in mind, I am right over a light right now. Like this light is going to totally like make the webcam look kind of garbage, but that has nothing to do with the webcam. Trust me, the lighting is just really bad for me right now. I don't have any way to change the lighting unless I turn the lights all the way off. Um, and in that case, it won't look really good at all. So um, we're gonna continue with the stream. I'm gonna get some behind the scenes footage and then we're gonna test some games while we're at it. One thing I do wanna showcase is the Touch Portal app. As you can see right here, this thing is really awesome. It's super easy to set up and you basically get access to, well, basically a free stream deck. It is limited in the free version and the full version is only ten dollars so keep that in mind but you can basically change between scenes so we got full cam desktop gaming full cam 
and it's all for my smartphone. You can use it on anything. It's really awesome. Now, a couple of other things that I really liked about this setup was the mechanical keyboard and mouse combo kit from E-Element. Getting a 10 keyless keyboard in a streaming setup is really cool because it allows you to save some space on your desk. And that keyboard is actually pretty high quality. Now, keep in mind, getting blue switches with a streaming setup is not always the best option because there are people who love blue switches and will come to your stream because of your blue switch typing when you're playing games. But then there's the opposite side of the spectrum where people absolutely hate blue switches and may not watch you because of it. So. Uh, uh, keep that in mind and uh, choose wisely. There are other variations of this keyboard that comes with a red switch. Now I wanna talk about the video quality of the Logitech C920. It's not gonna be the greatest video quality in the world, but the Logitech C920 does way better than most webcams on the market. If you give this webcam good lighting and a good situation to work with, it will give you really awesome results. So of course, the Logitech C920, you don't have to hear it from me, is a great option for this setup. Now let's talk about this PC real quick because this thing performed like a champ. One thing I have to mention though, we opted for the Ryzen 5 1600 because of its six cores and 12 threads and overclocking the system at 3.8 gigahertz was no problem at all with the liquid cooler. The only downside of the system is the RAM. The V-Color memory in this AM4 motherboard, more specifically the B450 motherboard, will not accept any XMP profiles whatsoever. So the memory in this system is really not good for Ryzen considering it's running at its default speed of 2133 any boost in performance without manually dialing in a bunch of overclocks to the RAM just results in the system not posting whatsoever. But I am gonna leave alternate suggestions in the description down below for you to check out because in the benchmarks, you might notice some stuttering from the live stream. That might have to do with the RAM selection that I chose considering I had to run the RAM out of low frequency. And for those who do not know, first gen Ryzen really benefits from a couple of things. Fast memory, dual channel memory, and memory with really good timings. Now I do have to mention one more thing too. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, where in the world is this liquid cooler getting air from? I do owe an explanation to FSP and Deepcool because uh, this isn't putting their products in the best possible situation because this case most certainly does not support a 240 millimeter liquid cooler out of the box. Did we make it work? Yeah, we did, because we're the Toasty Bros and we like modding things, but the front intake, well, lack thereof front intake, is not designed to handle a cooler like this. Even though the temperatures at 3.8 gigahertz hovering around 55 degrees Celsius under an Ida 64 load for like 30 minutes is perfectly fine, um, this is not an ideal situation. So when we were planning this PC, we decided to go with the Ryzen 5 1600 because of the six cores and 12 threads. Those six cores and 12 threads will allow us to use X264 when live streaming, but but when EVGA hooked us up with a 1660 Ti, which we weren't originally gonna be using for this build, we kinda of had a change of plans. We decided to use the new NVENC encoder on the 1660 Ti, and really, that made the live stream experience so much better. Yes, we got a six core 12 threaded processor, and it's not really being utilized because we're using that NVENC encoder, but the NVENC encoder is far and superior in terms of quality and performance when using that compared to X264, and as you can tell from the stream quality, it looked really damn good good. Now something you could do if you do decide to go with the 1660 Ti is opt for something like maybe an i5-9400F which will give you better gaming performance and just the lack of those extra threads really doesn't matter all that much because you're utilizing the GPU instead of the CPU for live streaming. But having those six cores and 12 threads are still pretty beneficial for doing multitasking behind the scenes while you're live streaming, having your tabs open, maybe you want to do some tweets, some edits, stuff in the background while you're live streaming. The Ryzen 5 1600 will still be very very good for that. So that pretty much wraps up this entire setup video. Um, how about we bring Jackson in real quick to give his thoughts about the setup and then wrap this video up real quick. So as you guys could tell, this thing for a thousand dollars, having a whole entire streaming setup and Matt showed you plenty well that this thing can do a full streaming, gaming, whatever you need to do with it for only a thousand dollars total. And there's a lot of room to upgrade with this system, as I mentioned before. So please, if you are interested in purchasing stuff for this setup, check the links in the description down below. And also, if you do like this video, leave a like and... And comment what you guys are interested in live streaming down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe. We will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs> Trip over the This is the most, like, <laughs> trash outro.